Mr. President, the committee to escort Senator Chester into the chambers awaits entrance. Would you admit the committee and the senator to the chamber, please? Thank you very much. I uh, truly appreciate the nice, warm welcome. Uh, uh, Speaker Bergren, President Story, Montana Senators and Representatives, I want to wish you a Happy New Year. And I want to thank you for inviting me here today to say a, a few words to this joint session of the Montana Legislature. It is truly good to be back in this people's house. I also want to thank uh, Lieutenant Governor Bollinger for being here and Attorney General Bullock, State Auditor Lynn Dean, Secretary of State McCullough, uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction Juno, uh, Justice Cotter and Justice Nelson, uh, and not to, not to uh, lower those folks at all, but I'm very happy to have my family here today too, my daughter Christine, her husband James, my wife Sharla. And while you're still standing, the true reason why I serve in the U.S. Senate, my grandkids, Keely, Keena, and Braden. Because these jobs, these jobs are truly about our kids and our grandkids. They say you ought to start a speech with an icebreaker, but in Helena in January, it's going to take a whole lot more than a speech to break through all the ice and snow on the ground. But that's a good thing, because it's moisture. And it doesn't get much better than that for a dry land dirt farmer. Both here in Helena and in Washington, D.C., we have a lot of work to do. We face many challenges, and we've got a lot of opportunities, whether that's on the economy or domestic policy or on foreign policy. This Montana is a special place. Our unique mix of cities and small towns and frontier and rural communities present unique challenges and opportunities. I want you to know that every day that I work as your U.S. Senator, I strive to give voice to that uniqueness and to make sure that our national agenda reflects Montana's priorities, our values, our dreams, our aspirations. Whether we like it or not, we live in a very interesting time. But as long as we work together for Montana, I am confident that we will overcome our challenges and make the most of our opportunities for a brighter future. <clears throat> we, we need to build on our successes here in Montana, and we need to provide a new direction for our country. And we need to start by working together. Both Montana and America are closely divided, with strongly held views on both sides. And that's fine. That's part of the diversity that makes us strong. But whether we're Republicans or Democrats or Independents or Libertarians, our shared priority of doing right by the people of Montana can always overcome whatever partisan differences we may have. Whether it's my work as Montana's only member of the Veterans Affairs Committee, working with Lieutenant Governor John Bollinger on a project that will put TVs and veterans clinics across the state, or working with Republican Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming on a wolf mitigation program for our livestock producers, working together across party lines is something that we should always try to do. 
I think back to when I first ran for the Montana Senate back in 1998. Like many of you, I went to every door in the district, and I heard directly from those constituents. Not all of them were from the same party. Some were Republicans, some were Democrats, some were Independents, some were Libertarians. The not so surprising thing was that everybody had the same concerns. Concerns about opportunity or the lack of opportunity for their children. Concerns about jobs. Concerns about the cost of higher education. Concerns about health care costs. Montanans want common sense solutions. They do not want political bickering. And it will pay off. I want to take you back to last session with the real ID resolution you folks had right here in this legislature. It started with a Democrat and a Republican joining together, and it ended with the Montana legislature voting unanimously to, oppo to oppose the federal government's Real ID program. I couldn't agree more. The Fed's Real ID program ma made no sense at all. So I took that resolution, and I went to work with Democrats and Republicans, and in the end, we won a significant victory when the Department of Homeland Security backed off. <laughs> there will be, there will be more battles to come on Real ID, but building on this record of working together will show us the way to success. During this legislative session, each of you will be challenged with passing a budget, considering measures to make for a more fair tax code, reviewing and tweaking policies to fit the needs of Montana today and tomorrow. Montana should be proud of our state's success in maintaining a budget surplus and living within our means. And for increasing this state's bond rating, few states can boast similar success. Many states from coast to coast and everywhere in between are begging for Congress's help. Governor Schweitzer, the state legislative leaders from both parties have shown the nation that Montanans know a thing or two about working together to do right by the people of our state. I strongly believe that the answer to our economic slump is to rebuild the economy from the ground up by investing in good paying jobs. As a Montana dirt farmer, I know well that wheat grows strong when the roots are deep in the soil. When we rebuild the economy from the ground up, we will generate broad-based prosperity where anyone who is willing to work hard can make the most of his or her God-given abilities. Our goal, our goal must be to reward those who do the work, who sweat, who struggle, and who do what it takes to get the job done. That's the great social compact that has built and sustained this country for more than two centuries. We need to give it new life for the 21st century. You are looking at the only Democrat in the United States Senate who voted against both the Wall Street bailout and the automakers bailout. Thanks. And I got the millionaire COOs to agree to a new salary of $1 per year. I, uh, I'm proud of those bailout votes, not because I don't care about the folks who are hurting in this economy. I care very much about folks suffering because of others' mistakes and shenanigans and misplaced priorities. Rather than to continue to lurch from bailout to bailout, we need a plan to put folks to work, rebuilding the economy from the ground up. Rebuilding the economy from the ground up can be summed up in a few words. Infrastructure, infrastructure, and infrastructure, along with, 
along with jobs, jobs, and more jobs. That means schools, roads, bridges, health care, energy development. Some people think that funding infrastructure projects amount to nothing more than filling potholes. Well, we all know that we have potholes to be filled. I hit one on the road coming up here today. What I am talking about is making an investment in our future prosperity. If we do the right thing, investing in infrastructure will be a win-win situation. Smart, long-term infrastructure projects will put people to work right now and will also build for the future. We know that every billion dollars that's put into infrastructure investment produces nearly 30,000 good jobs here in our communities. If these infrastructure dollars are spent correctly, then what will, re what will result are good paying jobs and improvement that will allow our communities and businesses to grow and prosper. We need an effective partnership on the federal, state, and local level to identify and prioritize these projects that have rock solid merit. And we'll work as public servants to get the worthy projects and only the worthy projects, the public dollars we need to make them happen. That is accountability. You and I both know that we've got Montana projects on the shelf that are ready to start moving Earth just as soon as we can inject some money into the pipeline. The Montana Contractors Association said last month that construction sector employment in this state has fallen more than 7% in the last year and a half. Montana is also proud of our outdoor heritage. That's God's infrastructure. Investing in it will strengthen our economy and create new jobs and create opportunities for hunting, fishing, camping, and hiking. There is no time to waste. And I know that President-elect Obama is eager to sign into a bill, sign into a law, a jobs bill that will get this country moving in the right direction again. Now there are some that are saying that we cannot afford a new jobs bill. I say we can't afford not to. We're <laughs> we are also going to need common sense regulation in the marketplace and common sense priorities for rural America and our frontier communities. I'm going to work on the Senate Banking Committee to pass some common sense regulations for the financial markets. I, I had the incoming chair of the Securities and Exchange Commission in my office day before yesterday. I can tell you what I told her. Just like the NFL playoffs, it's time to put the referees back on the football field. Uh, I, am, I am for free market capitalism, but without effective common sense regulation, unchecked greed will lead to chaos in the system, and good folks will be getting ripped off by a few bad apples. That is just common sense. All these years of misplaced priorities and the federal policy have run this economy into the ditch. And it's the working folks who suffer. It's the mill workers, the miners, the farmers in the fields, the mechanics out there fixing the cars and the trucks. They're the folks who suffer, and they are the folks who should be our top priority. And while, <clears throat> and while bricks and mortar and asphalt are important, we cannot afford to forget our human infrastructure, the people. We need workforce development so workers and Main Street small businesses have the skills to compete in the information age economy. Like many of you, I come from a frontier community. I work every day to put the needs of the people in rural America front and center in the national agenda. We have got to invest in people so these communities can thrive in the future. Because without leadership from public policymakers, young people will have no choice but to leave Montana to find opportunity. And that would be a darn shame and a sorry legacy to leave behind. As a former school teacher, I know that children are about a quarter of our population, but they're 100% of our future. We need to treat them that way. On the federal level, let me say plainly, we need to overhaul the No Child Left Behind Act.
it, it simply does not work, and it does not work for states like Montana. Congress and the administration need to go back to the classroom. I look forward to working with Montana's teachers, administrators, school board members, business leaders, community leaders, to pass common sense legislation to strengthen our public schools. Human infrastructure also means health care. Medical costs uh, too often take a huge bite out of the middle class family budgets. We need health care policies that help families facing medical challenges. One area that is a no-brainer is the development of electronic medical records. The VA uses electronic medical records right now. That saves money and it cuts paperwork. The bottom line is that electronic, me electronic medical records will help doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and other folks in the health care to efficiently deliver quality health care services that families need, and it will be done cheaper. Congress is going to take a fresh look at the broader issue of health care reform. My friend, Senator Max Baucus, has proposed an ambitious plan to overhaul the health care system. I look forward to working with Senator Baucus and other senators from both political parties and all points of view. We will find a consensus that will deliver results that middle class families need and deserve. We need to replace the current illness-based form of health care with the wellness-based form of health care. <laughs> and finally, on the domestic front, we cannot lose sight of the importance of energy. We're all happy for the current relief from $4 a gallon gasoline, but let me caution you that it's temporary. OPEC recently made one of the biggest production cuts ever to send crude oil prices back up. We have to diversify our energy portfolio. We cannot afford not to do that. Putting all our eggs in one basket is not the, in the security interest of this country and is not in the economic interest of this state. Developing our energy resources here creates jobs in home, in Montana. It strengthens businesses and it makes us more energy independent as a country. Montana has always been an energy producing state and it always will be. As the governor likes to say, we're the Saudi Arabia of coal. We also have tremendous oil resources like the Bakken Formation. And our refineries in this state provide some of the best jobs here. But Montana also has awesome opportunities for renewable energy. In fact, Montana can also be the Saudi Arabia of renewable energy, like wind and solar and geothermal and bioenergy. One of my signature initiatives here in this Montana legislature was wind energy development. For generations, Montanans have cursed the wind. Whether it's because of blowing dust or blowing snow, wind has been a general pain in the neck. Until recently, when new technologies presents us with opportunity to harvest the natural resource in a sustainable way. Today, the Judith Gap wind farm is up and cranking out power. We have another one firing up between Shelby and Cutbank, and many other projects are either online or in the works. We need federal leadership to help folks here on the ground to cut through the red tape, too. That often prevents promising projects from getting off the ground. In the Senate, I've drafted legislation to do just that. I plan to add my measure to the energy bill that the U.S. Senate will take up soon. A week from Tuesday, our country will, will inaugurate a new president. I look forward to this occasion when the whole country will join together as Americans and look with hope to the future. The new president and the new Congress will face many challenges abroad. After more than five long years, it's time to wind down the combat operations in Iraq. But the world is... <laughs> the, world, the world is still a dangerous place, however. We need a new strategy to tackle the challenges in Afghanistan, where al-Qaeda terrorists remain a threat. We need to restore habeas corpus, to begin to restore America's moral authority in the world. And we need to look to our international trade deals to make sure that American workers are getting a fair shake. And finally, we need to renew our commitment to open, accountable government and maintain the highest ethical standards for those of us who do the people's business. I learned long ago that public office is a public trust. 
I work hard every day to restore honor and integrity to Mike Manfield's seat in the Senate, the seat that I currently hold. My office was the first in the U.S. Senate to post my daily schedule online so that folks at home can see for themselves who I meet with every day. I commissioned an independent ethics review of my operations so we could get an unbiased set of eyes on my practices. And we passed the most sweeping ethics reform legislation since Watergate. More work remains to be done to clean up the mess in Washington that far too often puts special interests ahead of the needs of the people. You can be sure that I will continue my work in the Senate the same way I tend to my family's farm, where no job is too big, no detail is too small, and there's always hope for a brighter future as long as we work together. Many, if not all, of the good ideas we tackle in Congress were first tackled by a state legislature somewhere in this country. You have good ideas. I invite you and all Montanans to share your good ideas with me, especially as do we work to rebuild the economy and create good paying jobs. I ask you to call, write, email, stop me on the street, visit one of my eight offices around the state of Montana, and help us out. Good information allows for good policies. But it also takes working together to do what's best for Montana, for our children and our grandchildren. I want to wish you the very best of luck as you dive into this new session of the Montana Legislature. As Montanans, we are depending on you. And you know what you need to do here, and we know that you can deliver. Thank you very much, and stay in touch. Thank you.